Hi, I'm Aidan Swan. Welcome to my studio. I realized that I've been in the studio a year and I still haven't given you a walkthrough. So that's what we're going to do today. First thing is my tiny little studio garden. Here are succulents and there's some new marigolds coming up. And here are the more shade loving plants. I love bromeliads, they're my absolute favorite plant. I would love to have hundreds of different bromeliads. Let's go in. There is already somebody here waiting for us. And I've had to put Velcro in this curtain because of said somebody who has discovered the way out. As we enter, you see my drawing board. This is the area with a bit of natural light, so it's most suited for my painting station. This is where most of the magic happens. So I have whatever I'm working on, I've got my reference up top, and I have my jar of brushes that I use on a continual basis. This is my Winsor Newton, my Rosemary and & Co, and my Raphaels, all of my favourites, as well as my antique and vintage pens that I use very frequently. And yes, as some of you have noticed, I do use shells to mix inks. They make the perfect palettes. They're just the right shape. They feel wonderful. And I love having a little bit of nature here to help me along. These have been collected all over Cape Town. I got this arm thing about three months ago and it has changed my life. I used to have a whole setup with masking tape and Petersham ribbon, but now it's so much easier for me to film. And next to my drawing board, I have, of course, my inks. They're on my TARDIS cabinet, so-called because it's painted the exact blue of Doctor Who's TARDIS, which is a vintage medical cabinet. It's one of my favourite things. And it's on wheels. Most things should be on wheels. Those are my oil painting brushes, as well as um, sketching pencils. And... The iron, it's not antique, it's an industrial iron, and it's a dry iron. This is my little Bakelite box with fine liners and some gold markers. And there are dinosaurs everywhere. I love them. Aubrey loves them. Luna hates them. So he periodically throws them off, which also keeps him occupied. Right up top, we have bubble wrap and a beautiful roll of wool and... Then we have the articulated figurine, which is actually Tom's. That charcoal looks like normal charcoal, but it's actually really special. A few years ago, when my favorite forest burned, I went back and I collected that from some of the trees. Down here, we have envelopes with things like golden copper leaf. We have paint samples. We have paper samples from the printer. All sorts of sort of basic stuff. And here we have something else very special. It's an actual goose quill pen that a close friend ordered from Italy for me. Um, one day I will do a video of myself writing with it if you're so interested. Let me know. Now for the drawers. The first draw on the left is just hanging fixtures, which isn't terribly interesting. On the right, we have oil paints. These are Winsor Newton water-based oils. I really like them. Um, they're a lot less high maintenance than traditional oils. They're not so chemically. And I've also got some enamel paints, stuff like that. I don't do much work in oils anymore. I will get back to it one day, but now is not the time. And I have three drawers just of cord. This one's leather cord, and for some reason there is some velvet ribbon in there. We're not going to worry about that, but it's cord used for leather working. Next one over is pendant cord, which is cord for pendants. It's pretty satiny stuff. And the last one, which just says cord, 
is every other possible type of cord you might need. <laughs> and stuff for embroidery too. Basically, anything that's sort of string and doesn't have another home goes in there. Next up we have chain and wire. That one's not very interesting. Um, it is as it says on the box. And next we have buttons. I love buttons. Most, all of these are antique. Um, there's a heap of mother of pearl of various colours, black, blue and white. There's bone, there's antler, there's um, some vintage military buttons. And there are also quite a lot of um, Austrian crystal in various shapes and sizes, which are all in the back here. They are so beautiful, very delicate, but absolutely exquisite. All of these were left over from my couture company. I can't bear to get rid of them. They will be used on stuff at some stage. And on the right, we have botanical. So this is dried flowers and bugs that I use in the resin jewelry. So there's some dried flowers, there's lichen, there's roses, there's all sorts of beautiful things. I love these tomato boxes. I know that they're not the most elegant, but they're practical and they're free when you get tomatoes. So win. Little crab's claw. It's all really beautiful things that I've collected on hikes over years. And they will find the right time to be used. This one's full of bugs. So there's a heap of butterflies, there's dragonflies, there's chafer beetles, and a whole lot of famous flowers. Now we get to nibs and ink stock. These are nibs for my um, my antique pens, as well as inks that I've made. So it's my ochre ink, it's my tobacco ink, it's the stock that is waiting for new homes. As you can see, I've got a heap of uh, boxes of antique nibs of every possible shape and size you can imagine. Also, all collected over years. And there's also a bag of ochre waiting to be ground. There's a second bottle of winter glow which is the most spectacular red it was limited edition so i bought extra and the bone drawer i love the bone drawer it is quite obviously bones antlers tusks all sorts of wonderful things for use in use in jewelry most of these come from a good friend who's a blacksmith there is also the, the beautiful crystals that I picked up in Rosendahl last year. And this, this one's really fun. I only got this recently. Fossilized shark teeth. I've no idea what I'm going to use them for. Now, let's move the TARDIS and get lower down. So the next two shelves are... Oh, an escaped dinosaur. Let's put him back. The next two shelves are chemicals and paints that are more craft orientated that I predominantly use for film jobs. So it's uh, powder paints, it's wax crayons and markers and all stuff like that. Um, there's mount, there's wood stain, lino printing ink, mod podge, basically the whole podge of random things. Um, this is also where my leather stain is. This huge box is fabric paint um, and acrylic paint. I'm not going to open it because you know what that stuff looks like. Bottom shelf is all frames. Those are unfinished frames that are waiting. Um, small unfinished frames and then small finished frames. So those have been refurbished, sanded and stained and ready to go. This is my Sumi E brush. It's one of my most special things and my other large um, painting brush, as well as my mask for resin working and my apron, which has sadly seen better days. 
All of these boxes are seed beads, all carefully categorized according to color. Um, I, as you can see, have a bit of a thing for beads. And here's my light table. This station coming up is my leatherwork and jewelry station. So there's my Dremel all rigged up and ready to go. There's my jeweler's vise, bead loom, sandpaper, all the stuff I could possibly need. Three of my nine hammers, because you can never have too many hammers, as well as um, polishing and rubbing compounds, flux, because we're all in a state of flux. And those boxes are all Dremel bits. Then we have um, leather working tools, pliers, many, many pliers. They all have a different use, don't judge me. And more leather working tools. And here we have my sanding box and the box of jewelry stock, one of my boxes of fabric stash. And then up here, the corner shelving unit belongs to Luna. Well, belongs to all the mouse birds, but here's Luna's nest right up top. He built all of that himself. Well, I put the sticks up, but he built the rest. And then beautiful trims, just waiting for something to happen to. Antique Petersham ribbon in a multitude of glorious colors. And down at the bottom is shells, tiles, sea glass, more buttons, and the grimoire I made for the watch. The back counter is for any big work, painting, cutting fabric, whatever. You know about her, I did a whole video about her. The second mannequin, the taller one, is the one I actually use. It's 1950s and it's a perfect shape. Next up is my sewing station. I've got a Singer Simple. It's much the same as the Singer Heavy Duty, however it's got a plastic body, not a metal body, and a slightly slower cam. It's an incredible little machine, every bit as good as the Heavy Duty, and it's light and mobile. Next up we have more of my sewing stash, um, paperwork, and in the bottom cabinet is just random messy stuff. Here, in this beautiful old um, briefcase, there's some really, really lovely stuff. This is feathers and furs, all ethically sourced, ethically harvested. Um, furs came from a friend who's now emigrated to the UK. They are predominantly, apparently, from roadkill. Um, feathers are from my birds and from friends' birds, either taken during molts or sometimes taken after the bird has passed on naturally. You know how particular I am about feathers. And there's peacock feathers, there's reeves pheasant, there's temmings tragopan, there's emu, there's ibis, all sorts. And lots and lots of absolutely exquisite bits of fur. They are only for, for my use, but I'll show you what I'm going to use them for as I go. This is my press for rivets and eyelets. And next up is the mouse bird station. This is where they've got their food, their swimming pool, and their toys, as well as their branch. They're allowed to go wherever they want, but this is their spot. And this beautiful thing is a frame that Tom made, which is getting a painting done very soon. Yes, I know what I'm going to be painting in it. Um, no, I'm not going to tell you. And there's the wreath that was made for last winter. There's my hoof boots. Yes, I can walk in them. If you want a video, let me know. And next up, the art architect's drawers. Top drawer is stuff that I'm busy working on at present. So there's all my tarot cards. Second drawer is completed work that has not been framed. Third drawer is smaller paper. Uh, fourth drawer is large paper, so it's A2 and up. 
plus mount board and heavier, heavier, heavier duty paper. Fifth drawer is beads. It's a bit of a mess at present, but it's still an incredibly satisfying drawer. And the last drawer is some artwork by other artists waiting to be framed. It's a large frame that is almost finished. I just need to put a bit more work into that one. Um, some other work by me, my antique fan, that's a Victorian feather fan. And also Victorian bird lithoprints, which it's in terrible condition. I plan to use it for an artwork at some stage. Next up is my altar area. So it's a lot of um, beautiful and special things for me. There's also bamboo full of larger, heavier duty paintbrushes. There's my hornbill sculpture and my tarot cards, all sorts of stuff like that. And below that, I know that a lot of you will be interested, is a small, small section of my book collection. Um, it's mostly a fashion library. There's also my patterns, some vintage ones, and some that I've made. Um, and books on everything that is relevant to what happens here. I have a lot more books upstairs, and I've still got more in Joburg that I need to um, bring down at some stage when I've got the funds. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing a roundup of books, because I can definitely do that. And in the last corner is rolls of paper. Um, there's a large roll of Hannah Muller, there's three rolls of Awagami of various weights, and there's a roll of acetate. And that's it. That is the studio. All the things that make me happy and that I can make amazing things with. I hope that you enjoyed this. And I look forward to spe seeing you soon.